What is a soils report? We all know what soils reports are, but why are they so important? How is it made? What should we be looking for? And what are some tips to make a soils report relevant to you and effective for your planning process? We're gonna cover all of these right now, so stay with us. All right, so this is a jam. Every time I work with project teams and we're doing the planning of a project early, early on, as soon as we have it, I will want to make sure that we are referencing the soils report for our project planning. One of the biggest things that I've noticed is that we don't have enough bore holes to actually get a good representation of the of the soils on the project site, especially on larger sites. So let me talk to you about that first. In a soils investigation context, or a bore hole refers to a hole or a shaft that is drilled into the ground or excavated for the purpose of obtaining soils or rock for analysis at different depths, meaning finding out what is in the ground at what layers. A bore hole is used to do an investigation of subsurface conditions on a plot of land where the new building or the new project is going to be constructed. Borehole drilling can include different types of equipment like drill rigs with augers and coring tools. So as the investigator is drilling down into the subsurface and exposing the rock or the soil, it's analyzed and and documented as well at what depths these different types of soil or rock are. This rock or soil will be analyzed based on the following properties. Composition, density, moisture content, strength, permeability, and any other relevant characteristics. So boreholes can, can vary in diameter and location, but they're supposed to be strategically designed throughout the site and done specifically to accommodate the geographical features of that site. Meaning some of the things that you would take into consideration are foundation design, location of structures, slope stability analyses, or groundwater assessments. So one of the biggest complaints that I have with this is usually we don't have enough, right? You'll have a borehole over here that gives certain data and maybe it says, hey, you've got sand, right? And then you've got another borehole over here that says you have really good soil that does not require any stabilization and you're like wait a minute there's like a couple hundred feet in between them where does the sand end i've got foundations here i need i've got caissons here is it in sand is it stable what is it right really the key here is if you don't have enough information you've either got to cover your potential risks in your planning or ask for more boreholes to be pulled into the analysis, which is pretty difficult, by the way. Because the boreholes are there to provide critical data for the soils report and soils engineering analysis that will then educate how the site is built and what the structural foundations should be designed as. So the first step in all of this is to go out and do the, obviously the boreholes and to do the investigation and to obtain that data and then to do your geotechnical investigation. But the bottom line is once that is done, that effort should produce a soils report, which will also educate the structural design for the foundations. So a soils report is a document prepared by the geotechnical engineer that provides information about the soil conditions on that construction site and they help engineers and designers make key decisions about features like structures, roads, bridges, and retaining walls and the methods that are used to build them. Let me stop the technical for just a second and say that the soils report, when you're looking at your structural drawings, it will say whether or not you need to over excavate. It will tell you what you need to do with the construction of your caissons. It will explain to you how you need to, uh, to deal with the scarification of the site, what different means and methods need to be used. I remember in Texas one time, the soils report dictated that under foundations, you have to have void forms. For those of you who aren't used to dealing with expansive clay, what happens is if you drill into limestone or bedrock and your caissons come up and support the building and you have expansive clay underneath the foundation, it can actually heave your building. So the soils report dictates in different areas in Texas where I was working for a while at Hensel Phelps that you have void form. And what it is, is before you place your footings, you attach the footings to your caissons, but underneath the footings you have literally this this like waxed cardboard <laughs> that's all i can that's the only way i can really describe it and you put that down 
below, you place your footings on top of it and then the void form dissolves and creates a barrier so that as that soil expands, it doesn't affect uh, the building. And so your soils report will say you might have to over excavate. It might say you need void form that you might need to scarify and recompact. Either way, you need to know this information because let me tell you this, if you know that you have a specific schedule that you have to hit and then all of a sudden it, you've scheduled it and you're like jamming and then you find out somebody says, oh my gosh, your soils report says you need to, you needed to over X and recompact imported fill to the depth of 15 feet under your foundations, you're like, oh my gosh, that's a huge impact to your schedule. Let's say under a footing, you had to over X and recompact and that angle of repose or the excavation would literally undermine an adjacent building and you needed shoring along there. That's a huge impact to the schedule. So you're always going to want to reference your soils report. In the soils report, you will have a site description, the field investigation with data, any laboratory testing, the soil classification, which is key. Let me just go on a sidebar here really quickly. <laughs> just really quickly, because I promised that I would explain to you why we're looking at this information. So number one, you are looking at the soils report for risks. Let me give you an example. Your caissons, like if you have sandy soil and that's going to slough off and create this huge gaping hole, right, that might need to be stabilized with slurry, that's going to cost money, or the additional concrete, that's going to cost money. So that's number one. Number two, in your soils report, it's going to tell you if you have unsuitables that have to be hauled off or if you have to import in, which has a huge bearing on your construction plan and your timelines. Number three, it's going to educate you on what you need to do to prepare the, the building pad or the substrate before you start construction. If you have to scarify and recompact, if you have to over excavate and infill, if you have to build retaining walls, it's going to tell you these things, right? So these are some of the main reasons, but there's also another. It's going to classify your soil. We all know per OSHA regulations about type A, B, and C soil. There's rarely ever A and B type soil, rarely. And if it is going to be designated as type A or B soil, it has to be designated throughout, it has to be on the report, and it has to be substantiated. If it's not, it's a type C soil. And so I go around and I see people doing trenches or excavations and they're in a type C soil and they're literally benching from the top of the slope at a one-to-one. -one. I'm like, hey homies, this is not legal. They're like, oh, it's type B soil. What do you mean it's type B soil? Oh, somebody came out and said that they thought it was type B soil. Well, there's a lot more to it than that, right? There's testing from a qualified and competent person that can be done to verify that. But for the most part, it needs to be in the soils report. So if it's type C soil, no, you're going from the toe of the slope at a one and a half to one, and you've got to plan your project accordingly. You can't put people in dangerous situations. So that's another reason why you need to read your soils report is because of the soils classification. And then lastly, there's two things that will be communicated. It will be any recommendations and design parameters. This tells you exactly what they expect you to do as the builder to prepare for that for your foundations and it will educate the structural design and here's why you need to read it because if you read the structural drawings they may or may not list what you need to do to prepare they're counting on you to prepare the soil ahead of the foundations so you might have structural drawings and you're reading it you're going do 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 like this is great and it might not mention anything about the 15 foot over x you're gonna have to get that in the soils report so reading every single portion of that and sending that out highlighted and communicating that to the team is absolutely crucial. You'll identify any geotechnical hazards like risks from soil erosion, landslides, expansive soils, liquefaction, or seismic hazards. And so you want to know that not only for the building, for the designers, but you also want to know about those things as a builder so you can keep your people safe. This is just an overview. I highly encourage, I want to give you a challenge. Not only do I challenge you to like and subscribe to this channel, <laughs> but I challenge you to dig into your soils report and read every word, like at least under the recommendations and design parameter section, go in there and read every word and highlight what needs to be known for you to build an amazing project. And then take that out and make sure you're covered from a budget standpoint and a scheduling standpoint and that your means and methods in your safety planning is being educated by the soils report. And once you do that once, you'll get addicted to it because you'll be like, I need to do this. You'll get such relevant information from that and the site plan for your planning efforts that you'll never, ever, ever start a project without reading your soils report. And so there it is. Soils report is a jamming tool. If you don't have access to it, get access to it. 
You cannot have a proper plan without it. I'm going to link you to a list in the description below to the key things that you must take into consideration when reviewing your soils report and as you send that information out to the team so that you can have a proper plan. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I've loved spending this time with you and I really hope you put it to good use. On we go.